What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Knows, episode number seven. This is a, Steve Knows is a weekly live show on how to have a no excuses. And I got you on the several different screens here. So if you have any questions, comments, put them on the different screens. I have you on five different monitors here. So I'll be looking at different cameras throughout as we're going here. But let's let's get rolling here. Steve Knows is a live show on how to have a no excuses business mindset, guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, problem solving, so you can make more money with the strategy and structure to operate to dominate on the battlefield of business. This is a show for business owners, executive managers, and team leaders, as well as their teams that might need some help or even struggling with their daily development, teaching, training of your team, where we're going to give, we're going to really guide them on how to become even better leaders, communicators, problem solvers, so that they can be prepared for the battlefield of business and begin treating the business as if it's their own, allowing you to focus on the growth and scale of your company. That's what this is about. Here today on episode number seven, we're going to be talking about onboarding. And I know a lot of these different topics we might talk about on, on Steve Knows here aren't the, the, the fun, cool, sexy, exciting things, but this is the shit that if you combine this with all the other live shows that we do, like Steve says, which is about personal development and mindset. Steve does, which is health and fitness and nutrition. You combine those with this business stuff, you'll have you'll be operating to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. And then we add in the show I do with the kids and should I, the show I do with the Russian. Now we're talking about adding in your entire family into the mix. You become an unstoppable fucking force. That's what this is about. And today we're talking about onboarding. Now, you might have found the right person to, to hire for a specific position, but now what? Now what? And, and how detailed is your onboarding process? And today we're going to help you create just thinking about how to create a step-by-step -step process, giving you a real way to onboard your team. Because the problem is we get we hire someone, we give them a manual, and we just throw them out and, and they go on their way. And then we wonder a week later why they're failing, they're not performing, you're not getting the results you want to get. And, and I'll tell you what. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about how we did it back several years ago, onboarding new members in, in our gym, in our fitness training center. This onboarding process, in some ways, in some capacity, sometimes it would take months of internship, which is technically part of the onboarding process, if you think about it. Now, if we had someone we were going to go put out there with our loyal paying customers, some of them that were there for years, some of them that are new that we're spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of marketing dollars on to bring them in. You got to make sure that you are servicing them with people who are going to give them the top quality service and product that, that only you, your place can deliver. Now, how are you onboarding? I know we always talk about Hire slow, fire fast. Really part of the hiring process is, all right, the person's hired, but to me, they're technically not hired. There should be that probationary period where you're going through onboarding and you're seeing, all right, how well of an actual culture fit is this person? Like that's the way you need to think about it because that's what onboarding is, is really getting into the deep culture. And you can see on some of these cameras, you can see behind me these different core values. We have a, a peak promise, a peak pledge, core values, those are the type of things that we would dig into in the onboarding process. Going over those core values with lessons and, and strategies and tactics and examples of how to demonstrate those qualities of the core values. And also examples of how people have fucked up and abused those core values in the past. And those promises and those pledges and what we're actually providing for people on a regular basis. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about onboarding. And just like anything else, you need to have a specific protocol. And I see tons of I see messages on these different, different pages here. So just want to make sure if you have any questions, comments, put them there down below. Talk about your onboarding. Talk about your business. Do, do you have a standard operating procedure for your onboarding process? Like, do you have a system in place or is it just, all right, we, we give them a day of training and then we throw them out there to the wolves because that's what you're, you're literally doing. If you don't have an onboarding process, you are literally throwing them out 
out, out to the wolves. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. And you need to have a onboarding process for basic for all employees. You need to have an onboarding process for each different department that you have. And there needs to be, there needs to be checklists. There needs to be a, a, a step-by-step series of events that they go through to be onboarded. And we are talking about specifics and details of, of what you're going to go through step by step. And like anything else, you need to have an SOP. You need to have standard operating procedures. Like, let's, let's start off with, we ha- let's just start, tell, you, tell you about what it was like with a trainer. If someone wanted to teach a class, a boot camp class in our gym, what they would have to do. So first off, you need to have a step-by-step process. There needs, there needs to be there and demonstrating and learning and studying and have a mentor. Who is going to be their point of contact? First off, they need a point of contact on the onboarding process. Who's going to be walking them through this? Who's going to be training with them? Who are they reporting to every day? This all needs to be listed out in your SOPs. You should have an SOP, a standard operating procedure for every single task, every single position in the company, in the business. And then every single task. I'm talking about an SOP of literally a written checklist, step-by-step, in detail that a fucking idiot like myself can walk in there and be able to perform those duties just by going through the checklist. And then along with that checklist, just checking the messages here as we're going, along with those checklists should have all the different all the different screenshots if needed to go along with those 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 tasks. Maybe screencasts, videos of what needs to get done and showing how to do it, demonstrating how to do it, actually going through the steps, going through the process of exactly what gets done. And I'm just checking the messages here and scrolling through here on the Instagrams because I see some some messages coming here. Just checking to see if there's anything, any questions. If you have any questions, put them there, down there in the comments. So, Let's talk about in the gym, in the gym that we, we had. And you could apply this really to any, to different businesses and to think about how, how detailed it needs to be. And this goes for anyone. This, this could be, this is the same process of the general part of the onboarding for any position. And so first off, they, there would be a meeting of all the staff and learning the scheduling, learning the departments, learning the organizational chart, who does what in each department, who's responsible for what, who's re- reporting to who, getting contact information, phone numbers and emails and whatever information you need to have about all your team members, especially if you have a big company, maybe on your smaller team. So that's the first thing, getting them connected with all the other people on the team, especially in their in their smaller part of their team. And then it's we're talking culture training. We are talking deep fucking freak mode culture training for every, and this goes for every position. We're not even talking about the onboarding for their actual position, the actual nuts and bolts of what they need to perform on a daily basis. They can't even get, you can't even get to that point until you go through different type of culture training and, and, and KPIs and all this other stuff. So the culture training is alone could take, depending on your company, depending on how deep you go into it, could take days, could take weeks. We're talking about going through codes of conduct, you know, learning and understanding and Learning and understanding the core values. Again, I told you they're right here. 15 core values that are listed up there. There are three overarching core values, but literally going through those core values, learning and understanding them. And going over basic company policies, procedures, not just the code of conduct, but actually policies, procedures. How do things work? What is the tribal knowledge about the about the, the company, about the, the workflow that needs to get worked down? Then part of the cultural training is your unique values. A, a few episodes ago, a few months ago on, on here on Steve Knows, I don't remember what episode it was. You could, you could look it up on YouTube or wherever. We were talking about unique values. They need to know unique values. They need to be able to speak about what we do. If someone asks them, oh, what do you do? Or what's so great about your company compared to the competitor down the street that charges half as much? That person needs to know and be so deeply ingrained into the fucking culture and the community of that business. That they could tell them what makes you different and what makes you better. They need to, it needs to be drilled into them. The unique values of the products and the services. The new unique values of the team and the staff and the employees and the management. The unique values of the company and the business and, and the, the, the history of the business. 
Then also knowing that, that promise that's up there, which was a guarantee from you to your members. What kind of guarantees do you have? What are you going to provide? What are you promising to provide for your members? Then there's this. This is a, a peak pledge. You can see up here on this other banner up here. That's the expectations that we're expecting from the clients in the business. And this is the kind of stuff that needs to be drilled into every team member when it comes to onboarding. And that's just the barrier of entry. That's just to get into the door. That's just to even start even thinking about talking about what your job is going to be and how to now onboard for your job. That's just the basics. You getting to know all the other people, getting to know how the business works, all the policies, procedures, the promises, the pledges, the core values, the freaking culture, the unique values. That shit could take a while, depending on how deep and in-depth they're going to go into it. And a lot of this stuff should be done with SOPs, like we said, with all that stuff onto an online platform where they can have, we, we would call it Peak Freak University, where they would have all this stuff they could study and learn. They're getting taught by their mentor in, in the business, actually in person, but then also they are, are expected to do, a, do some due diligence outside of working hours to learn and study how things go so that they could be up and running and ready to roll. Then they need to be onboarded on what are your what are your expectations? What are your standards and expectations for that position? What do they need to learn how to do? What are their key performance indicators? They need to learn them and understand them. What are their key performance indicators on getting referrals, on leads, on getting reviews, on supplement sales, on clothing sales, on getting testimonials? on checking in, on social media, social media behavior, social media check-ins, social media posting, frequency of posting about the business, about what you're doing. Like, what are your standards? Listen, it's your business. You can decide what these parameters are. It's up for you to decide. This is your onboarding for your business, your company. And if you're an entrepreneur, that's the fucking great thing about it. You get to decide. And if someone is not on board with your vision, the way you want to do things, what your high standards and expectations are, guess what? They have the freedom to go somewhere else. That's the great thing about it. You get to set the tone. You get to set the standards and expectations of the business. If you're the owner, even manager, depending on how much freedom you have and and autonomy you have in the business. But all right, let's get back to it. Setting those standards, those key performance indicators. In in a in a what are what are they expected to produce? What are they expected their ratings on member surveys and things like that, client surveys? How does feedback go up and down the chain of command? What is feedback based off of? And it should be based off of those core values. And what are the different protocols and expectations for each individual in each type of of, of department and task? They need to learn how to to deal with different clients, how to deal with clients on the phone, how to deal with clients in person, how to deal with clients out in society. How do you talk about the business? How do you, you have a, a, if you have a physical location, what is the protocol on, on someone walking in? You need to learn and understand what are, what is the protocol for someone walking into your business? And then all these things also have a practical application training and coaching, and onboarding, practical application, and role-playing, where you need to show me that you can do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to break down what I did step-by-step. I'm going to show you the checklist of how to do it. I'm going to give you screenshots and videos of demonstrations of how to do it. You're going to study it, and you will be tested on it. You'll have to do some role-playing and show you can do it, both in practical application, doing it, also maybe even writing it out and written, depending on what we're talking about here. You need to have onboarding and protocols on opening the business, closing the business, keeping the place, depending on it in the gym, like cleaning, cleaning and opening, closing the gym, closing the business, whatever it is, every single part of the business, you have to be onboarded because then later on a month down the road, when this new individual that you thought was this fucking rock star is just dropping the ball and not getting shit done, you can't sit and bitch and complain if it's not something you didn't onboard them the right way. It is your fault as the leader and we hear about it all the time on the fucking internet, extreme ownership and take accountability and all this other stuff. But no one fucking does it. All people do is point the finger and blame other people. If you consider yourself a leader, if you consider yourself a manager, uh, an owner, an entrepreneur, and there, you should consider yourself a leader no matter where you are in the chain of command. There is leadership up and down the chain of command. You should take responsibility for this shit. If someone's dropping the ball. It's because you didn't 
onboard them, coach them, teach them, guide them, mentor them, and lead them the right freaking way. Onboarding then, and that, that was, that's all the, the basics right there. We didn't even get into the specifics of their actual job. Then if they were, let's say, a personal trainer, they needed to go through a full personal trainer certification, a full personal trainer kind of internship just to teach a class. And that goes for a one-on-one, separate personal trainer certification, boot camp class certification, and boxing classes. So whatever their job, they have to now get pretty much in-house certified in that stuff. In nutrition, they would have to get certified. On the supplementation on sales, on clothing, on all this stuff, on warm-ups, on what our protocol is for actually delivering our product or service. And they have to pass tests on all this stuff, both practical application, written, demonstration, on all this stuff, on basic equipment, where things are located. Because imagine you're going to service a client on a particular piece of equipment. And you don't know how to fucking operate it. You don't know how to set the selectors or the switches or anything like that. You need to have a deep onboarding process. That's what you need to do. All these different steps in every, whatever the business is. This need, it needs to be written out, in order, demonstrated and, and, app, and tested on. And then retested on and retrained on. And let them know when we're going to revisit this. When are we going to retrain this? We're talking deep levels of onboarding. And if you're not having onboarding to this level and to this depth, you'll be, then, then you'll be wondering, why does this person suck? Why is this person not getting referrals? Why is this person not performing? Why are they not getting results for our clients? Why are the clients pissed off? Why are we getting all these tickets for problems with the service, problems with the product, whatever it is in whatever industry you're in? Why are we not getting any referrals? Why are we not getting any reviews? All the different aspects of the business need to be drilled down to like to the details, to the details. Then also the standards and expectations. What standards and expectations do you have about workflow, time off, days off, what kind of stuff gets done, breaks, sick days, vacation days, all that shit like training, not just handing over a fucking book, actually training it and going into the depth of why the shit gets done, the way it gets done, how it gets done because you have the high standards and expectations that you have on board the freaking clients. They should also, part of the onboarding process, probably in the beginning part we talked about, should be a little bit about the story and the history of the company, how it started, how it's going, why it goes the way it's going, where it came from, what are the foundation, what are the roots of what's going on? That's all part of it. They should know all that kind of shit. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take you through about what, what a, a personal trainer has, just the basics of the internship, what they have to go through, the bare minimums they would have to go through just to teach some classes in a gym. But in addition to everything I just said, of course, then they would need copies of all the different certifications and CPRs and all this stuff, first aid and all that stuff, insurance, all these different things. That's all part of the onboarding, making sure shit is going up and running, right? But just to be a trainer, they had to observe a minimum of five personal training sessions. Let's say they want to be a personal trainer. And this would also then be done separately for boot camp classes, for boxing classes. So if you want to be a personal trainer who also teaches boot camp classes, who also teaches boxing classes, you would have to do this entire checklist for all three of those areas. So first they would have to observe five personal training sessions with at least two different instructors. And then it would get signed off by the instructor they're with. And that instructor would know ahead of time that someone's going to be observing, so they're coordinating and they can give feedback and, and connect and, and be aware of that. Then there had to be they had to be trained by another trainer for five different training sessions. They can experience it from the other side with at least two different trainers. Then they had to actually five practice training PT sessions with volunteers, either other coworkers, team members, maybe volunteer clients of another uh, another trainer. Five different practice PT sessions with at least two different people, just a practice. Then they had to design five different weekly programs, 12-week programs for three different types of clients. Then they would have to co-train as in kind of shadowing and observing another trainer training someone for five different sessions for at least two different trainers. Then they had to train a session with a shadow and a co-trainer with them for at least five different sessions. Just to be able 
to then coach by themselves for one session. And all of those lists would be have to get done also, again, for boot camp classes, for boxing classes. That is just part of the in-house certification program, just to be able to get on the floor in front of paying clients. Because listen, you practice on practice, you execute on fucking money. You don't want people practicing on your hard-earned leads. And the way that I broke that down, obviously that's not going to be fit for every type of industry, but you just see the detail that it needs to have. The onboarding, the, the thought process that needs to go into it. The structure that needs to go into someone onboarding. Because what you do usually is you, need, you want someone working there. You don't want to do the shit yourself. So you rush through the hiring process. You don't do the due diligence. We went through the hiring process a couple weeks ago. And then you rush through the onboarding process because you want to just shove them out there. So you, you, you think that you, that you don't have to do it yourself and you don't want to spend time on, it takes too much time and money to train them and coach them and onboard them. You know what? It takes 10 more fucking, 10, 10 times more money to, to fire them, pay their unemployment when they go get their fucking unemployment, whatever else, and to then have to go recruit and search and train for another person every two, three months. That is a shitload more expensive. So if you think you don't have time to onboard someone, to train someone, to bring someone up to speed, especially if you have high standards and expectations, you're looking at it from the wrong way. You need to come from a different perspective. So take the time, create a strategy and tactics and specific details of how to onboard the people in your business. And if you need help with this, to, to make it specified to your business alone, let me know. We could talk about it. We could help you set something up for you and your team and your business in detail, and we will talk about it. Also going on right now is the Freak Mode 40. That's the 40 day and night daily discipline habit challenge. Check the links down below in the comments, and you can see how to get set up for those if you need help with your daily disciplines. It's habit stacking at its finest to help you operate, to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. And that's what we're talking about here each week on Steve Knows is your business and money making and needle moving activities, income making and income generating impact making activities like onboarding. Take your time to onboard your team because listen, you're not going to get anywhere by yourself. You need a fucking team. Even if it's, it's, if it's an actual in-person worker, employee, team member, or even if it's online, if it's virtual, it's a VA, it doesn't matter. You need to onboard them. Take the time. Stop rushing. Stop being lazy. Stop skipping steps in the process. Create an SOP for your onboarding and fucking stick to it. Let me know if you need any help with it and I can help you out and walk you through it. We just actually work on this type of stuff with our LTD, our leadership and team development training or also one-on-one coaching, operate to dominate. So let me know if you need any help with this stuff. Also check out the Freak Mode 40 Daily Discipline Habit Challenge, 40 days and 40 nights of compounding habit stacking to take your life to the next level in your mind, your body, and your business. This has been Steve Knows episode number seven. I will talk to you, see you next time. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.